Hey boys and girls, I'm back. I hope that you've received your learning packet. It should have been in your mailbox. If it's not there, it'll be there soon. Um, I'm gonna review a few things that are listed in the packet so that you'll know what you can practice this week. Uh, one of the things that's listed in the packet is that you should be practicing your name. So I want you to watch as I write this name always starting at the top and going down with an uppercase P because it's the first letter of his name. P-E-T-E-R. First name is all, first letter is always capitalized or uppercase. The rest of them are lowercase. Now, his last name is Parker. Another uppercase P. Parker. Peter Parker. Oh, maybe you have heard that name before. Doesn't he have something to do with Spider-Man? Give me a thumbs up if you have heard the name Peter Parker before. Remember when you're writing, the first letter is going to be uppercase, and in your last name, the first letter. So you have a first name and a last name, and you can be practicing both. It's just time to practice your name. So that's one of our activities that is in the packet for you to practice your name. Another activity that's in your packet is um, naming the characteristics of animals. A characteristic tells you about something. It's a way to kind of describe it. Is your mama a llama is the title of our book and there's a question mark right there and it's a question. Is your mama a llama? As we read this book, the little llama is asking questions and he is giving or hearing characteristics of each animal. Please listen carefully as he will ask or tell about the characteristic of the animal. Is your mama a llama? Look, he's looking, there's the little llama and he's looking at this animal. This is hatching from an egg. Hmm. Oh, now he's watching them. He sees them. He's making an observation. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Dave. There's Dave. No, she is not, is the answer Dave gave. Rhyme. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. I do not believe that's how llamas behave. Oh, the characteristics. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. Oh, those are some characteristics. Oh, I said you are right about that. I think that your mama sounds more like a bat. See how the bat is hanging upside down in the cave? Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Fred. No, she is not, is what Freddy said. She has a long neck and white feathers and wings. I don't think a llama has all of those things. Oh, I said, you don't need to go on. I think that your mama must be a swan. Oh because he gave the characteristic. She has a long neck and white feathers and wings. Those are the characteristics of a swan. So now he's asking this animal. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Jane. No, she is not, Jane politely explained. She grazes on grass and she likes to say moo. I don't think that is what a llama would do. Oh, I said, I understand now. I think that your mama must be a cow. Moo, look in the speech bubble. So the characteristic is she grazes on grass and she likes to say moo. That's a characteristic of a cow. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Clyde, right there, Clyde. 
No, she is not, is how Clyde replied. Replied means answer. She's got flippers and whiskers and eats fish all day. I do not think a llama acts quite in that way. Oh, I said, I'm beginning to feel that your mama must really be a seal because she eats fish and she's got flippers. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Rhonda. No, she is not, is how Rhonda responded. She's got big hind legs and a pocket for me. So I don't think a llama is what she could be. Oh, I said, that is certainly true. I think that your mama's a kangaroo. Look, there's the pocket and big hind legs. Hind legs are like her back legs. And they help her jump. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Lynn. There's Lynn. Oh, Lloyd, don't be silly, said Lynn with a grin. My mama's got big ears, long lashes, and fur. And you of all people should know about her. Our mamas belong to the same herd. And you know all about llamas because you are one too. Mm, yes, you are right. I said to my friend, my mama's a llama, and this is the end. See, that's his mama. She has fur and long ears and long lashes, eyelashes, and they're in the same herd. Animals can live in a herd, and look, these llamas are all together in a herd resting. Oh, and I see a full moon. So the, the end. Uh, so if you're gonna describe a characteristic of an animal, you have to tell about it. You have to give some information. Mm, so in the story, you could go back through the video with your family and point out the different characteristics of the animals. And you could tell your family about the story or you could act it out. Okay, if you were gonna act out being a seal, would you be swimming in the water with your flippers and looking for fish? In the story, that's what happened. So if you review the video with your family and talk about what happened in the story, you can tell them the characteristics of the animals and you could act it out and show them what each animal does. Oh, hang upside down like a bat? That would be fun. So please enjoy the story and tell your family about uh, the events and the characteristics of the animals. All right, and next, uh, part of the lesson for this week is talking about patterning, creating and extending patterns. And we know that a pattern is when something repeats. Look at the kid, he is crouching. The way he is there in the picture is called a crouch. Now he's standing up, crouch, stand, crouch, Stand. You could make that pattern at home with your family. Clap, stand on one foot. Clap, stand on one foot. What's next? What's next? When you make a pattern, you repeat. You do the same thing over and over again. See that? There it is. That's the pattern. You could use a pattern like this at home. And in the packet, there are suggestions for ways for you to extend patterns. You can do it with your body. You can do it with songs. You can do it with music. And then what is the pattern? You can look, see it, read it. If you read the pattern, you go yellow, purple, yellow, purple, yellow, purple, yellow, purple. Or sometimes we even call that an A, B, A, 
B, A, B, A, B, because it's two. Here's another pattern. Do you see how it repeats? Huh. You see patterns everywhere. I see patterns up there. I see patterns in the window. I see patterns in the kids. You could describe the pattern to your family. That means tell about it. And the next one is what comes next. You have to read the pattern and then you figure out what would be next. What would be next? What comes next? Here's another one. It shows you a pattern and you need to finish the pattern, but you can do it any way you want. Except if it starts with a green triangle, blue, blue, green, blue, blue. Can I put a red one there? Thumbs down. No, the red one isn't making it the same. It has to repeat the same way over and over and over again. In your packets, they will have pattern pieces for you to use to make your own pattern and show your mom and dad what comes next. And you can look at this video and look at these cards if you want to read and make sure that the pattern repeats. This one is three different shapes. So if you were going to read this one, you could call it A, B, C. A, B, C. Because it's three. Triangle, square, rhombus. Triangle, square, rhombus. What's next? What's next? If you say green triangle, you are correct because you are repeating. So in your packet, they have cards like this and they have pattern pieces for you to make your own patterns. Remember, you can make patterns in any kind of way that you would like. You could use um, pencils and marker, pencil, marker, pencil, marker, pencil, marker. It's a pattern if it repeats, if it happens over and over and over again. Um, let me see. Uh, I want to thank you for watching today, boys and girls. I hope you enjoy the packets. Just work on the packets and keep on watching the video and we will uh, be ready for kindergarten when uh, the fall comes and we go, go back to school. See you next time. Thank you.